Hello everyone and welcome back to Prodigal Overland. My name's Brad. If you're new here, let me be the first to welcome you. Today's video is going to be all about how we handle solar and for power when we're out off-grid. So currently, and actually for the last month or so, we've been staying north of Moab on BLM land. Where, so there's no electricity, no power, no hookups. And what I want to do today is kind of show you exactly how we keep up with our power when we're out off grid. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you've got a comment or thoughts about this video, leave them below. And without further ado, let's get going. All right guys, so what you're looking at here is a 100 watt solar panel. It's a portable panel, meaning that I can pick this panel up and move it anywhere I need to move it. It's a suitcase style, so this will fold in half and fit very slimly into a, a very portable uh, size. Um, and it's made by a company called Renogy. And when we were looking at these portable type um, solar panels, we looked at several different companies, but by far, these were the cheapest and the reviews were, were good. Um, so we've had this solar panel now for a couple years. It still works well. There is something that happened where the kind of the, the glass over top of this side got cracked um, while it was in the case. So that would be definitely one of the negatives I have towards this panel is that the glass covering it doesn't seem to be, certainly it's not indestructible, um, but the panel is still working. It's probably not as efficient as it was before, um, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through the panel, it's different features, and then we'll move on to the, the batteries that we use. So here we are around back. What you're looking at here is the solar charge controller. That 11.7 volts is showing you what the status of the battery is that it's charging and we'll get to that in just a second one thing i want to point out here is that based on the type of battery that you're charging this charge controller you can select so there's different types so right now i'm charging a lithium lithium battery our rv batteries are a lead acid which is considered a wet battery and i can switch to that and then the charge controller is able to kind of direct how much energy is going into those batteries so to charge anything the way the panel works is you connect the alligator clips to the the positive and negative polarity so it's the same for the rv battery and this is our portable solar battery from energy and like i said i'll get to that in just a second um, but we're able just to kind of connect those alligator clips to get the charge into the battery and like I said, the solar controller handles all the, the management of that. So hopefully you can see here some of the cracking I was talking about. I discovered that actually when we got out to Moab here, it had been a little while since we used it, it was in its case. So I don't know, just kind of jostling around or if it got pinched between something. Uh, let me try to zoom in here. You can see it's kind of spidered and cracking. It hasn't like released shards. The thing you're gonna kind of notice maybe is that these are a little dusty. Being in the desert and how dry it is, it's been kind of tough to keep them super clean. Uh, we wipe them down every now and then, but they still seem to work okay. Again, probably not as efficient if it was glass that wasn't broken and it wasn't quite as dusty. One of the reasons we went with a portable system as opposed to like a roof mounted system on our, our RV is just that, the fact that it's portable. So. If you're looking into solar, you need to kind of consider, even if it's just something that you're going to stick on your roof rack or mount on maybe a smaller trailer, the main difference between or disadvantages and advantages of a portable system versus a roof mounted one is obviously if it's mounted on your roof and you're in a wooded area, and you if you're in shade or something like that, it's difficult to kind of position the panels like you need to. Even in an open area here in the desert, you're kind of locked into wherever your RV is parked or your rig is parked, your trailer, whatever. So if you want to kind of adjust those panels, um, you need to reorient your rig. Whereas with a, with a portable system, whether I'm in a forested area or I'm in, like we are now, a desert, 
I can keep moving the panel to kind of track the sun. And if we are in a, in a forested area where maybe I want the rig to be in shade, but obviously I need the solar to be in the sun, I can still accomplish those things. Another thing I like about the portable system is that if we need to lend it out or help somebody else charge their batteries a little bit, it's a very easy thing to, to kind of, um, you know, pass between. We recently had friends that we were staying with um, here in the desert that, that needed some electricity into their rig and we were able to just let them borrow ours um, and that worked out really well. So I honestly really like the portable system. Now I will say if I were to buy this panel again, I would look for a larger panel than 100 watt. So they go easily up to 200 watts, some a little bit larger. And with that, obviously you have more energy coming into your batteries. Like I said, when we started, we had a 25 foot um, trailer we were towing and the power consumption on that was definitely lower than what we're pulling out of our big rig here for the 40 foot trailer. Um, now the 40 foot trailer also came with a an uh, gas powered generator. So between the solar and the generator, um, we're able to keep our batteries topped off easily here in the desert. Um, so much so that we'll run out of uh, we'll run out of water before we run out of electricity. So that's been good. So next up, what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through the battery system that we use, um, just to see. So when we're not running the generator and we're not plugged into shore power, how do we charge our computers, our laptops, phones, whatever? So let's look at that now. So this is a power bank. It's a lithium power bank. I think this one's got close to 900 amp hours of power. I don't think it's quite a thousand. When we were looking at this type of setup, we were looking at goal zero initially, and then we stumbled upon this company called Energy. So I just wanna kinda of walk you through this setup and why we went with this. This battery came with six household plugs. So we plug our laptops, our phones, We've run blenders off of them, vacuums, um, hair dryers, basically whatever you need to run off of it. It's got two of the DC DC um, current plugs there, like a cigarette plug. It has two USB plugs and USB-C above that. And then also the 30 amp on the side here. So when we're not running our generator, and we need power, we're able to plug into this battery and we've loaded this thing up pretty good. They actually don't make this, the Apex model anymore. They've got a new, they call it the Flex version coming out and that Flex version can handle uh, a steady pull of 1500 watts and, and a 3000 watt surge. So these, these things you can really um, we've never even come close to running anything like that on ours. So they can really take quite a bit of draw. The other thing to look at here is kind of this, tells you what's going in. So right now it tells you right there that it's 75% charged. It's connected to solar, so I've got 55 watts going in. And it's at 11.7 volts right now. So that battery monitor is really nice that it... It, it tells you specifically how much is energy is going in or coming out and how much total battery power you have left. And I'll tell you, this we, I think we paid right around $1,000 for this when we got it. So they're not cheap, but I mean, we love this thing. I, I absolutely love it. it. It's really performed well. Lithium batteries should last a good 10 years. So if you're looking at it that way, there's there's plenty of life in this thing. Um, it's got two settings on it. One, if you are just got your USB ports going, it, it draws less energy. It doesn't have to kick the fan on, but if you're running your regular household appliances, then it, it pulls the fan on to help cool the battery. But um, again, very, very happy with this kind of unit. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this company, Energy. We're not affiliated with them at all. Um, and like I said, their new system seems kind of even more interesting. You can really kind of stack up how much power you think you need. So again, why I like this battery is, as opposed to having lithium batteries in my rig, this is 100% portable. So when we're out on the trail, I'll take this with us so that we have power to 
recharge the cameras and the drones and if I need to run an air compressor or whatever, I have it. But then obviously I can move it into that, our house and have it go in there. So um, again, very, very pleased with this, this setup. So just a few thoughts about our setup and things I would change, things I like about our setup. Number one, I really like how portable it is. Um, that's been a huge plus. So if you're if you're looking at solar options and, and you think you're gonna be in different areas as far as forested, desert, that kind of thing, portable might be a way to go. If you're always in full sun, if you live in a desert area and that's the only place you go, then a roof mounted option might be good for you. Um, another thing I like about it, like I said, I really like the fact that we have that lithium battery that we can plug into when we don't have power, which again is portable. The price point on the Renogy panels I feel like is, is, is very good for what you're getting. Um, so again, I went, my only hesitation with them is like I said, that, that glass that, that kind of cracked on the front. We tend to be kind of rough on our stuff. <laughs> Um, so I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure how that got broken if something got wedged or pushed against it. Um, but as far as the cost of that panel, it's, you know, it, it's a good $200 cheaper than an equivalent one that we've looked at. Um, we also happen to have a discount code for the Renogy panel. So I'll put that in the link below. It ranges between, I think it's 10% now. There's different kind of codes, but t at least 10% off that panel if you're looking to buy something like that. Um, and again, I wouldn't hesitate. It works. You know, I it was a company I wasn't too familiar with when we bought it, and you know, I, I like to be able to save some money, but also want to make sure the stuff I'm buying is going to work. And we've we've had that a good while. It, it's worked really well, so I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it on that end. As far as things that I would change if I were buying this again, considering that we're now in a 40 foot uh, fifth wheel. I would definitely, I think I still would go with a portable system, but it would try to get the largest kind of suitcase version that I can get that folds up nicely, just so that we have more power coming in. That being said, I've been surprised at just between that little 100 watt solar panel and the lithium battery and run, and we might run our generator here maybe two hours a day. And that, that keeps us, between the solar and that, we basically have indefinite power. Um, like I said, I'm gonna fill tanks in my RV or um, run out of water before I'm gonna run out of electricity. So yeah, I don't know if you've priced any kind of solar options out, but if you start pricing this stuff out, it's, it's not cheap. And so for as small as our system is, it's really, it's really done a good job for us. Now, one thing that will kind of happen is you know in the desert here it's been like full sun all day which is great so we have pretty much full charging all day i will say even with our smaller rig if we had a cloudy day or an overcast day it really set us behind as far as the solar because in our old rig we did not have any kind of a uh, gas power generator um, but if we had full sun with just that 100 watt panel we were able to keep ourselves going in that rig as well so what we usually do now is I'll hook this up for about four hours to our RV, the solar panel, and then I'll switch it over to the portable battery, that uh, energy battery. And between that, if I've got full sun, I can keep us going and maybe supplementing just a little bit with uh, the generator, like I said, an hour or two a day with that. And that's been, that's been great. So that is, you know, if you would have asked me when I first started how big of a system I would need, I would have guessed much, much larger than that. So just keep, keep that in mind as you're looking. Um, like I said, if you're looking at portable, I, I would get the biggest panel that you can fit um, and, and go that way with it. But it's certainly if you're just cruising around in like a Jeep, just your car, a van, even that 100 watt panel with some good sun probably will do you just, just well. Um, but guys, that's all I have for today. Like I said, these midweek videos, just kind of quick updates on, on different things that we're using. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't, and again, look for those codes below for a discount on this panel. And thanks so much, and we'll see you guys again real soon.